We're going to talk about bleeding, okay? Yeah, bleeding. Yeah. If you're going to do a normal service, yeah. you basically, you've got to understand that this pump, um, the manual, the manual pump, pump for the fuel pump. Right? I'll, show, I'll show you something that. Okay. Depending upon where the crankshaft is and the camshaft is on this, because it's got a load, yeah. you can get to a point where you don't have any stroke because yeah. the camshaft's on its highest point. Yeah. Okay, so if it feels like, yeah, feel, just feel that. That's a spanner, 17 mil spanner. That's basically if you've run we, it out of. We've got three cylinders here, so we're doing the. You just do two. You don't have to do all three. Yep. Tap on each one. Yep. So that just means you could switch one off and turn one on, and if you could isolate that, and it just means you can still run and maintain that filter. Yes. While the engine's running. Right. Okay. No, I can change the other filter. I don't think that for you. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any advantage. So 10 mil. Where was that one? Oh, that's a 10 mil. Yep. It's a. 12 mil spanner, yep. um, just a basic spanner kit, uh, 17 mil, 19 mil, um, 19 mil. yeah I'd just buy like a, an ordinary spanner set, socket set, you get away with most most stuff, yeah, the yep. electricity is not good. These have got special plugs yep. that are sealed so that it's just plugged together, yep. that, that's off to your dashboard. Okay, you've got a wiring loom that connects that up to your dashboard so everything's taken care of. Inox, good stuff? Yep. Anywhere you shouldn't put inox in this engine? Don't put inox in. Don't go in there. In the, in the alternator. alternator. No, don't go anywhere near that. Okay. Or your belts, don't go anywhere near your belts. Yep. But any yep. of your uh, connections, yep. uh, it's fine. Okay, main battery lead, main power battery lead goes there. Hopefully you'll put a um, start a battery on it. Well, you're going to have you're going to have a starter battery and you're going to have house batteries, aren't you? Yes. You're not going to have. We're going to deep cycle for one job and start up for the other. Okay. And what are you going to talk about Vaseline or something? Is that what you're no, talking? no, 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 no. You can actually get a product from CRC or uh, from Worth, which is a cool again. Um, it's a CRC product or a Worth product. Right. Okay. It's just battery uh, terminal protector. It's a spray on stuff. Any. Yep. Now, when you hit the key, you apply power to there, which energises that solenoid, which kicks this out. This is that called a bendix? That's the bendix. Sort of mm, here, like that. It's a bit hard to do it on this one, but that pulls it up here. Yep. Okay. Then, when it's there, what happens then is when it's going, when it's pushed that out, it also attaches power from there to there via this. Uh, for a, a, a big metal um, band inside, yep. and then that applies power to the motor, which then turns that. Yep. Now, when you release the key, everything stops, but this thing still stays engaged yep. until such time as the engine gets to speed and the engine actually throws it out. Yep. All right. Okay, so that's how the starter works. Please. This burn out, like this one has. Um, that's burned out because of a key failure, so the key stayed on. So it's a matter of listening at the same time. If you hear an unusual noise while you're starting it and it mm. stays on, generally um, it's a problem. <coughs> Most starter problems start from a flat battery. Yep. Um, the contacts inside get dirty like that and they don't put the power across it and then the starter motor starts to overheat because it's not getting enough power to do its job, it's struggling, generally you end up with a burnout like that. 80 amp alternator? Yeah, 80 amp alternator. That'll pulley with bolt onto there? Yeah, pulley Those bolts on there. Bolts, yeah. And then they have a, uh, a kit that basically mounts it up, up sort of somewhere around about there. I'd suggest that you probably steer clear because you've got two. Yeah. You're basically pulling um, Nearly two and a bit of horsepower off the front mm. in electricity, but uh, I'd say that would be best left to the dealer. Right. Um, but it's tap and adjust. Yeah, you you just do your, before you go off venturing around the world or wherever you're going to venture, mm. do your 50 hours. They'll do the tap adjustment there. Um, yep. That's yeah. You've got to have a real feel for that one. Um, 
So that one there is best left to the dealer. The well, one cylinder's at the back. That's number one cylinder right there. Yeah. Every other vehicle, engine, pretty much, yeah. number one's there. Right. So Yanmar's always at the back. So one, two, three. Okay. Okay. Not for your dash. Yeah. That's another start solenoid. So you've got two start solenoids. Um, you've got a. So that's a start solenoid. Yeah. Is that, I think we're equivalent to that one Yeah, there, basically so. that's the same as that, but this is where the key comes into the air and goes shh. Okay, now you've got, um, you've got a glow plug relay, you've got glow plugs under there which assist your starting, generally won't be the glow plugs. Those are those things under there. Okay. Um, no, they preheat the air. Is that one there? Yeah. yeah. They preheat the air. They've, they've put on by this glow plug relay. It stops it from unwinding itself. That's why it's important to have it there so that you you can tell that that is on and it can't wind itself oh. up. Okay. It can't wind itself. Once again that's the gear lever. Yeah, yeah, that's basically the yeah, into gear and out of gear. Okay, so no problem. What are we gonna do here? Probably gonna turn it yeah there, okay, so that's forward, is it? Uh, clockwise, awesome. clockwise is forward. Oh, yeah, clockwise. And counterclockwise, so that's probably reverse here. Yeah. Exhaust, it's probably not that hot, but that's hot water, and that's hot water. So we've got spare hoses on the hot side? Yep, yeah, on the hot side, and maybe one for that. Yeah. Okay. The rest of them we wouldn't worry about. So whenever we get the boat out of the water, yeah. we're going to change, change the oil drive, the oil in the sail drive. Yeah, and, uh, do the, do the anodes on the prop and down the bottom of the... Yeah, they yeah. like a pet rock yeah. most likely. Yeah. That's the zinc anode. That'll be the one that wears out the quickest. So if you're onto that one, you can do that one in place. Yes. It's just a matter of undoing that. Yep. Diving down. Put a new one on there. It's got a funny little... Oh, no, it's a... It's, a... Um, it's just an hour and a you know. Yeah. Yeah. See, because it's the smallest, it'll be the one that wears out the quickest. Yep. Now, the function of these is pretty exciting, really. Yeah. It's where they sit yeah. when they're in the go so ahead position. Yeah. You know, when you keep sailing, yeah. they stay like that. Yeah. Now, now, let me get this right. Now, they have an overdrive function. Are you aware of that? No. Okay. So basically, say you're going, in, say you're going forward, which is going to be doing that, is it? Yep. Okay. Now, like that is your leading edge. I think that's how it works. Basically, yeah, that's that's how you're going forward. Now, the overdrive function is basically when you go in reverse. This is yep. what happens. This thing. Say, say it's just sat there and it stopped. Yes. Okay. You fly the boat up and it goes in reverse. It does that. Okay, so you go in reverse. No one go in reverse. Right. While you're still going in reverse, yeah. the boat's still going backwards. The water's pushing against it so it can't actually fold itself. Yes. You hit neutral quickly and then hit forward and that'll change the direction. Now that just all of a sudden gives you 20% more drive for the same amount of RPM.